Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you're well. My name is Jocelyn Milliman and today I'm going to be talking about the state board exam for cosmetology. I recently just took my state board and I passed. Yay! Just got my cosmetology license a few days ago. Uh, actually about a, about a week ago now. So. I am officially licensed, so that is awesome. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to pass your state board. So if you would love to see this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already so you can be part of my family and my channel here. I would really, really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get into the video. It's been quite a while. It's been a couple months since I showed my face on here. Been quite busy. I do have a job. I work at Sally's. Of course, was studying a lot, trying to make sure that I was gonna, you know, have all the material that I needed for my state board and, you know, and just regular busy life every day. I, it feels good to be able to record again. It is officially fall. <laughs> Today is October 6th, I believe. So I'm wearing my flannel and a cute uh, fall lip color. So. So I am going to be talking about my state specifically. Every state has their own like rules, laws, and regulations when it comes to state board. So if you're not in the state of Florida, I don't know what your laws are. So I'm only going to be talking about Florida here. Florida here, we have two exams. There is a theory and there is a clinical exam. Everything is on the computer, it is multiple choice. Passing here, you need a 75 or higher to pass. For mine though, they don't go by like, if you got an 80 or if you got an 85. It just goes by like a bar graph of low and high in each category. So for whatever category that you did really good on, it'll have a bar of whether you did like really low or high on that certain category. That's how they did it, at least here. You can start when you're in school, because I want to get as much information as I can to help uh, the best way possible. Everyone learns differently and at their own pace. So, of course, however you want to study, however is best for you, just do that. When you're in school, pay attention. And I want to mention too, I believe her name is Mia, Mia's main. I'm not exactly sure. But I got this idea from her. I'll link her uh, video and her page down below in the description box if you wanna go check her out. When you're in school, pay attention. It is a lot, a lot, a lot of information that you get in just the year. And a year might seem like a long length of time to have, but it goes by quick, like really fast. And you have to, you have to know sanitation, you have to know your state law. You have to know business and nails, makeup, everything with hair, chemicals. Um, they even teach you about electricity. So you like you need to know a lot of information in what seems like a short amount of time. Pay attention in class. Take notes if you can, and your teachers are there to help you. So you know if you ever feel that you don't understand something, ask. Don't be embarrassed if you feel like everybody else is kind of like getting the hang of it pretty quickly, but you're over here like, I don't understand this. Ask. It's okay to ask questions. That's what they're there for, to help you. That's, that's all I have to say when it comes to school. Just pay attention and ask questions. In school, at least for mine anyways, I went to FTC, which is Florida Technical College or NUC University. We have blocks, which is kind of like semesters, so each block is three months. They gave us mock tests, and I've mentioned these before. I actually showed these in my previous video, my last one that I did a few months ago, which was a study with me, and if you'd like to go see that, I'll link that down below as well. A few of the questions that I had gotten wrong on these, I wrote down on note cards. Not all of these that are on the note cards are from these packets. There are a few on here that I got from like different different questions that I had gotten from like my, my canvas on online. Some of the questions I got from like Kahoot, I wrote them down and I have quite a bit here. So I use this to study from. Whatever ones that I got wrong, I would just put to the side. I would just study the ones that I really needed extra, extra work on. 
and that helped me a lot as well, especially writing it down. I felt like writing it down kind of helped it to click a little bit better. So that's what I did. Because, you know, when you look at it on the paper here, you can just kind of study from this and go through each one. But when you do that, you can't actually like, because you already circled it and you already know the answer. At least if you have it on the note card, you're really testing yourself and you're like, oh, do I really remember this one? So that's what I liked about the note cards. That's what I did there. There were a few websites, I'll link them down below, that I had also gotten from Mia's Main and they helped a ton. They helped me a lot. I'll link them down below. There's a few of them. They're free. So I just took those. Those are really neat and I really enjoyed using those as well. And I also use Kahoot. Kahoot is really, really cool and it really helped me a lot as well um, to kind of just study. And you can do practice on there as well um, instead of just competing against other people. You can just practice by yourself without no timer because normally Kahoot there's a timer. But you can kind of just study at your own pace without a timer. Whatever questions you got wrong, they'll repeat it for you. Um, so that's really cool. That's that's really what I studied from. Another thing that really, really helped me is praying. I know there's, everyone has their own uh, beliefs out there and that's okay. But what really helped me was trying to pray before I studied, praying before I took my exam. I read a scripture from the Bible. I bring my Bible everywhere with me. So I read a scripture and I said a prayer, just asking God for focus, um, any distractions or doubt to be removed. And that really kind of helped as well uh, for me anyways. So, you know, don't forget to include God in your everyday life because he cares about you and he loves you. If you do get tests like this, hopefully your school does provide that because these really do help a lot. Keep them keep them even even after you graduate even after you get your license keep them because it's always good to freshen up on your education and keep your education going even after you get your license so you know it's it's always a good tool to have when it comes to studying for your exam there are quite a few materials that you need to know well, for the clinical it was a lot of chemicals having to do with perms, perm rods, relaxers, perm placements. There was a few questions about the pH scale that was on there. Having to know different pHs when it comes to relaxers and perms. Um, so you, you really need to know a lot when it comes to chemical services uh, for the clinical. There were some questions of hairstyle on there, but not a lot. For the theory, I will say the theory is a lot easier than the clinical. When I took the clinical, I thought for sure that I was gonna have to retake it. You have to really, really pay attention, really read the questions, because for the clinical, the way that they worded it, they tried to trick you. So you really have to pay attention. For the theory, a lot easier than the clinical, a lot easier. It was just like these tests that we took in school. And for that, you need to know makeup, you need to know nails, uh, hair cutting, hair styling, uh, a little bit about chemicals, um, and a lot of sanitation. Sanitation, you really, really have to pay attention because they do not joke around when it comes to being clean and making sure that no infections are being spread, that they wanna make sure that the clients and the hairstylists are not spreading germs, that they're healthy, you know, that they're, you know, nobody, they don't want anyone getting sick. So there are a lot on sanitation and disinfection. So really pay attention when it comes to that. I originally was supposed to take the theory first, uh, but when I got there, they were closed because they had a, a power outage issue. So I had to reschedule. So I took my clinical first, which in all honesty felt like was kind of a blessing in disguise because like I said, the clinical was a little harder. So I was glad that I got that out of the way first. And then when I went to take my theory, I kind of just went through it and I was like, this is so much easier. Okay, I can calm down a little bit, you know? You get there, you need to have two forms of identification, driver's license or non-driver's license. For the second identification, you need to have like a debit card that's signed with your signature or like a passport or something. Unfortunately, here they don't accept birth certificates as a form of identification. 
So either you have to bring your driver's license and a debit card, but it has to be signed. You have to get there like a half hour before your appointment. So for me, I got there like 45 minutes before my scheduled appointment. My clinical I had September 16th, and then my theory I had it on 26th. I believe I had my theory on, if I'm not mistaken. But it, yeah, they were spread out a little bit. They're pretty strict when it comes to there. They do have security. So you go in, they do give you a key because they have lockers. So if you have a purse, like a small little purse, at least you have a locker you can put your stuff in. You cannot bring your phone in the testing room with you. You can't bring your purse. They will make you roll up your sleeves if you're wearing long sleeves to make sure you don't have anything written on your arms and they check the back of your ears. If you're wearing glasses, they had me take my glasses off and they were examining it <laughs> just to make sure. They really uh, wanna be thorough and make sure that nobody is trying to cheat. So they check your glasses, they have you roll up your sleeves, check your pockets, they pat you down just to make sure you don't have anything else on you. Once you bring your identification, you have your locker key and your driver's license that you bring in with you to the exam room and that's it that's all you have um you can't wear earrings like this like you can wear like small little studs that's fine but if you have big hoops you have to take them off you can't wear bracelets you can't wear necklaces and if you have to reschedule you have to call like 48 hours in advance because if you call the day of the school will no longer pay for it so for my school which was nice they do pay for your exam they pay um twice so if you accidentally fail one they will pay for you to take it again and i would say just think positively any doubt that you have just release it and really just try to study don't cram the night before don't procrastinate and wait until like the week of your exam to try cramming all of that information in in your brain before you go and take the exam. Don't do that. Really take your time right after you graduate, while you're waiting to get that call or that email that you can go take your exam, study, study, study from the moment that you graduate all the way up until you get that call. You have to, you really, really have to because it's a lot of information and you don't want, you're already anxious and nervous enough already as it is when you go in there. Uh, so, and nobody wants to have to go second. Nobody wants to have to go in there a second time and have to retake it. Who wants that? Nobody wants that. So if you wanna pass it on your first time, pay attention in school, really study your information, know your stuff, <laughs> know your stuff. Here in Florida, you have to know, I mean, I'm sure it ha that's how it is in every state, you have to know your state law. Here in Florida, it's 477 state law, so we you have to know that. Board of Cosmetology, you need to know OSHA laws, EPA, you have to know all of that. You can always go on Google and search the 477 state law, um, or even go on the OSHA website. They have everything on there. Just really really study and read from your book as well don't forget to read from your book because your book has a lot of good information and when it comes to your clinical as well you have to know step-by-step -step procedures when it comes to perm rods and relaxers and stuff like that really really read your books you're given them for a reason you know what i mean so take advantage of your book i'm done rambling <laughs> everything will be okay just remove any self-doubt stay focused breathe just know that it's gonna be okay. And if you don't want to have to go back and take it again, really, really study. Study, study, study. It's very, very important. <laughs> but that is it. I'm done rambling. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I hope that you have a super duper wonderful day. Bye.